Hello and welcome to I Can't Believe It's Not The Mouse, the podcast all about animation not made by the mouse. I'm your host, Octaviano Macias, and today we're going to look at the video game animated feature, Angry Birds, the movie, or the Angry Birds movie. It doesn't really matter, it's Angry Birds. There's really only been two of these movies as far as I know. Personally, I am a fan of Angry Birds. I, I like the games. I can't imagine a lot of people really hated these games other than people who, of course, just didn't want to get into the popular trend at the moment or just think they're too cool for phone games. But for the most part, most people are fine with these games, right? Like, I, I'm not saying that everyone was, like, deeply entrenched uh, into the Angry Birds um, fandom, um, because they made cartoons, like, you know, webtoons, I don't know if they ever did, like, full-on animated series for, like, TV, I don't think so, but they made webtoons, they did a bunch of spinoffs and whatnot, and for the most part, it's like, look, at the very least, that original game where you were just taking the little bird and just aiming it at a bunch of pigs, most people were, were fine into that game, I mean, for the most part, I'd say it's probably the game that convinced a lot of people that you can, you know have fun with your phone not not that it was necessarily like the first game that people got into with, with their phones or anything like that but it was probably like the most known example of what a phone game was and what a phone game could be and on those standards like i said for me it was a fun game not something that i would go too crazy about like it was not mario it's not pokemon and it wasn't like anything too crazy so it was kind of crazy to think that for a time it was so popular that the company behind it was just going all in on it to a point that they were doing pretty much anything with it. I mean, I remember at one point there was even like a little theme park for it. I don't know if that's still standing. I know this was uh, pretty much in its home country. I mean, it was popular enough to get a movie so quickly. And for what it's worth, not a bad movie. Hey, before we get this video started, I just want to say thank you for coming on. And if you enjoyed this video, like it, comment below for whatever reason you have, whether it's a question or you just want to give a shout out or just whatever. And if you've been watching a few of my videos, why haven't you subscribed yet? I mean, I'm sure some of you already have, but if you haven't, please consider subscribing. It won't hurt. It will get you more of my content. And if you really want to see some more stuff, ring that bell. Again, thank you for coming on and I hope you enjoyed the video. It's, uh, it's definitely not a what I'd call a good movie, it's, uh, it's fine, it, it's a time waster, it's the kind of thing where I'm like, I can watch this with kids, um, I can watch this on a slow day, and I, when I just want to relax and don't want to watch anything that's too, um, full of substance, just something simple, something like it back, uh, for the most part, the movie itself is pretty much something that would be more at home, like, watching it, like, on, like, you know, Cartoon Network or something, like, where, uh, it, it feels like a bunch of Looney Tunes shorts or stuff like that strung together. Um, and that's, you know, also like a double-edged sword to the movie where pretty much like the weakest aspect of the movie as well, where it's like, because it's such a simple uh, Looney Tune-esque uh, kind of movie, that means that a lot of the time it just feels like it's wasting your time with telling the story because you, you can get get the idea of like okay this could have done, been done shorter um but it's not necessarily bad for what it is it's pretty much just a wacky little comedy which is kind of what it needed to be because the whole angry birds thing is kind of um absurd anyways like i mean if you go back to that original game um it's pretty much like here's these birds they were just represented as little balls uh, essentially Simple shapes, red bird, you had a triangle bird, you had a bigger circle bird, an oval bird, pretty much that that was the general idea. Um, of course, there were, it was more complex than that, but that was pretty much what you had. Um, and you would just put them on a swing, uh, not a swing, um, um, a slingshot, and, you know, aim them at these boxes that had pigs on them, and you'd win once all the pigs were gone. And the whole aim of the, the the game was like to see how how much you can destroy with the the least amount of birds possible. Simple game, 
fun. Uh, I played it a lot, and you know, honestly, watching the movie it made me want to play it again just because it was such a, a fun little time waster that it ever got this big. I mean, it both it both makes sense, and it also kind of surprises me because the the people behind the, these games were like so confident in the world that they created that they were trying to you know branch out to everything, and it's like. Uh, you know, you know, good on you. You made your money, but you know, I, I just don't see this as a big lore thing um, that could work. Like you know, similar like to Pokemon or even Mario, which is also you know pretty basic. But for what it's worth, like I said, it makes for a fine movie. The movie itself makes some changes or a lot of changes to what we had established at that point. Uh, pretty much because it's a movie, they had to do more with the designs which I remember was kind of controversial, not by much, but, you know, to an extent, back when it came out where they actually added limbs to the characters, and it's like, well, yeah, you're not going to have, like, these little balls just rolling around for an entire movie. And I know they did some short cartoons with that, but that works because it's, like, you know, three minutes versus, you know, a 90-minute feature. And for, for what it's worth, I think the designs that they went with on the movie are really good. It stays true to the game while you know, making them look more appropriate for a feature story. And even the personalities that they give these characters are fine. I, I think for what it's worth, the the thing that works makes the, um, the movie work in its favor is the fact that they got these celebrity actors who are pretty good at voice acting. A lot of these people, you know, don't feel like they're just there just to sell this movie. Like, you know, you got Maya Rudolph, Danny McBride, Josh Gad, um, and Jason Sudeikis as, like, the main characters. You also have Bill Hader as, like, the, the, the main villain, the pig character. They all sell their roles really well. Like, you know, uh, if, if I had to go with any specific characters, I'd say Bill Hader and Josh Gad are probably, like, the like the, the, the best characters in the movie, you know, from a voice acting standpoint. Um, you, you also get um, Peter Dinklage as uh, the Great Mighty Eagle. In the original game, it was pretty much, like, a... A, wee, a way to you know easy beat levels pretty much it would be like okay you spend a dollar or so and you know this eagle would come da come down and beat the level for you at least from what i remember i don't know if they've changed that i know a lot's changed since i played it but yeah they, they even adapt that into the movie pretty well like for, for the most part the movie is pretty much for better or worse the game um pigs come into this town most of the birds trust them the three main characters, or more specifically, the main character, um, Red, which is the the mascot, of course, of the Angry Birds, doesn't trust them, and eventually it's like, oh yeah, they're here to steal the eggs. So they go back to the pig um, place, they use the slingshot somehow, and they pretty much, you know, get their eggs back. I mean, it, it's pretty simple. I don't think anyone's going to be too crazy if I spoil this movie, aside from the fact that it's an old movie um, at this point. And, you know, it's just, I mean, it's Angry Birds. You know, what else were you going to do? But yeah, for for what it's worth, it, it adapts the game, you know, well enough. Like, it, it gets those things in there to a point where if you've never played the games, you'll be fine following this. That being said, it is kind of confusing with the world building when it comes to this movie. Not too much that it ruins it, but this is where I, I kind of feel like it feels like a Looney Tunes kind of thing where, like, you know, like they they, they establish, like, okay, the birds can't fly, so they make a lot of jokes like, oh, you know, birds will never fly and stuff like that. And, it, you know, in the context of, like, knowing the games and whatnot, I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I know why, because they don't fly in the games. But... If, I, if you've never played the games, I imagine that the jokes are going to be a little weird. Like, okay, you'll understand. Like, okay, so I guess this is a world where birds don't fly, but it's like, why? Like, why don't they fly? Why, why have they never flown before? Or why did they stop flying? Uh, especially because, you know, you eventually get to the Mighty Eagle, um, who's like the only one who could still fly. And they established that he's supposed to be some great hero, but... As far as I remember, you never really learned, like, what exactly he did beforehand as a hero, which is not necessarily bad, but it, it does make for, like, I, I imagine if you're not familiar at all, you know, with this world, you'd probably be a little lost. Um, not to a point that it'd ruin it for you, but I don't know, it might, it might make it a little awkward, uh, you know, at the start of it. But, again, it's such a laid-back kind of movie, it also goes right back around where it's like okay 
you might not even care about it. You already know, like, okay, this is really just there just to make your kids laugh. And, you know, for older viewers, you'll get some kicks here and there for some of the jokes. And I, I do get some kicks for, for some of the jokes. In terms of, like, how they adapted it, it's pretty much like, okay, well, the main character, Red, is angry all the time. And they kind of, they do a pretty good job of setting up, like, why? Because he's an orphan and everyone treats him like shit. So it's like... I mean, he's kind of justified in being angry all the time. Um, but, of course, this is a whole society that's like, oh, no, you can't be negative. You have to be positive all the time, which, you know, okay, that's, you know, cute uh, commentary on how our world is, where a lot of times they don't want to deal with people who are negative, so they try forcing positivity on everyone. So he's sent to anger management, and that's where he meets pretty much two of the main characters that are going to be involved with the story, which is... Um, you have Chuck, the Josh Gad character, who's a speedster, um, and Bomb, the Danny McBride character, who blows up whenever he gets mad. But he's more of an awkward, like, soft, um, giant kind of character. And he, he's really funny. Um, you got their instructor, Matilda, voiced by Maya Rudolph. And then there's Sean Penn. Yeah, I'm not joking. Sean Penn uh, actually is in the movie as well. He plays... A character named Terrence, which is like this big bird. Like in the games, he just looks like um like the red bird, um but big, and he kind of looks like that here too. But they do try to make him stand out a little bit more, so it doesn't look like they're just relatives or anything like that. Um, and it's funny because yeah, Sean Penn is in the role, but they just have him grunt and growl and do stuff like that. Like he never actually talks. Which is kind of funny. I don't know. That kind of makes it <laughs> perfect. Like I know some people will be like, "Well, why did you get the celebrity at that point?" And it's like I, I don't know, but it's kind of funny that you got the celebrity at that point. So it's that whole thing. Like I said, pigs eventually arrive, and for that chunk of the movie, it's pretty much like okay, they're fooling around while Red is trying to figure out something. He basically goes on this journey to find the Mighty Eagle to you know basically say like, "Hey, you know, can you help us with this thing?" Mighty Eagle's a disappointment. And, you know, pigs steal the eggs. We go to their the, the, the pig island. They get it back using the slingshot. Um, which, I, I kind of find it clever how they do it, but it's still kind of weird. Because they're like, okay, well, we got the slingshots, uh, and we're trying to get them by surprise. So, we're going to fling ourselves one at a time into the castle to get the eggs. So, it's our attempts at, you know, going at it, which is like, okay, that kind of weird like you know why not just sneak around but okay that's one way to do it you know you gotta you know include that just to reference the game honestly to me the weirder part is just that they at that point they're like okay well since we've already you know established this we're gonna try including the powers that the characters have in the games because of course like you know just to differentiate each bird aside from their shapes in the games there's like okay each one has a very specific gimmick like you know red is your standard bird so no real powers. Um, Chuck, pretty much, um, when you tap on him in the phone, he goes a specific direction super fast, which, you know, we've already got that, so it's fine. Same thing with the bomb character. But then you got characters like Matilda, who, yeah, in the game, you know, she has a, a special power, which is that she shoots out, um, like, uh, bomb eggs. Never been showcased to do that before in the movie. And then she starts doing it because... It, you know, of course, it's the game. But it never lasts long enough for you to really get that bothered by it. It's just one of those things that, yeah, that's definitely... Like, okay, we're doing a bit much on the fan service, but, you know, it's fine. Honestly, the fan service that I thought was a little more clever in it was... um Because by this point, they had already had a spinoff where you played as the pigs. And you, um in the pigs game, you would pretty much create these little advent uh, inventions that were designed for, for the pigs to pretty much go over these obstacles to catch the egg. So it was, like, pretty much their perspective on the whole thing. Um, they, they they include those, those adventures in, 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 the, um, in the movie where you have, like, within this whole third act, like, okay, here's them flying around in planes. I mean, they even showcase them driving cars in the, in the, the Bird Island part of the movie. So, you know, they had already established that, but it's still just a neat little reference, especially because... If you've never played the games, you wouldn't even think about it. But yeah, you pretty much get that whole thing. And, you know, they say, you know, we learned that it's okay to be angry sometimes. All perfectly fine. Uh, honestly, the biggest issue with the movie is something that's been talked about before. And I'll get to it in a bit.
if there's any real issues with the movie, it's in the jokes. And and uh, this is also the movie itself. It just sometimes the jokes don't land, which you know whatever that wouldn't be that big of a deal. But some of these get kind of annoying. Like there's a running gag with a uh, mime character constantly saying "Oh my god," and it's like, okay, you already did this joke with the with with the mime bird. You, you don't have to repeat this every single time the character gets shocked. It's a mime. You know, if you're constantly doing this, you're just ruining, you know, the surprise of the mime talking. Um. And on top of that, it's the kind of movie where things are rarely silent. Like, if the characters aren't talking, you're probably hearing some um, some music. It's usually licensed music. Um, sometimes it's, you know, there's a funny effect to it. But some a lot of the time, it's just like, man, it'd be so much better if this movie was quiet every now and then. Like, granted, watching it again, I didn't have much of an issue. I, I did first watch this back when it came out. Um, and I remember when I saw it, since it was such an early morning thing, I was pretty much already kind of having a morning headache and it was like, okay, please shut the fuck up movie already. Um, I didn't have that much of a problem watching it again, but it is something we're checking out. Yeah, it's kind of tiresome. Please, you know, quiet down. But that all pales in comparison to the pretty awkward messaging of the movie like the whole thing about being angry that stuff is fine and i actually do like some of the stuff that the movie does in it i i feel like it's kind of not necessarily mature but you know it feels like something that you don't really see in animated movies all that often like you know the whole you know it's okay to not be happy all the time um the stuff with the mighty eagle i kind of like just because it was like oh okay so they're going to this place with this great uh, leader who will help them win the war or whatever. And then it turns out that he's this washed up loser who is just pretty much obsessed with the image that's been created for him. Um, I do think it would have been a little bit better if we knew exactly what he did in the past that earned him such a legendary status. But, you know, even without that, it was still just, you know, great seeing this whole sequence of like, okay, we're going to, you know, meet this guy who's great and it turns out that he's not and just having that dis disillusionment and realization like okay we can't rely on just made up heroes and stuff like that to save the day we we have to work hard ourselves to do it great little message um could have been better done but I, I i still think it was well done where it gets awkward is that a lot of the movie hinges on the fact that it's anti-foreigners like, it's pretty much like, hey, look, these people are weird because they're different from us and they're from some other place that we don't know. We can't trust them. And then as the movie goes on, yeah, we can't trust them. They are they were here to steal our, our children and eat them because uh, in their culture, our babies are their food. Pretty awkward choice for, um, for a message for a movie. And, you know, to be fair, it, it's not... Like, I, I'm not going to say that the people making this were intending it to come out, you know, racist or, you know, anti-foreign. Uh, I'm sure this was something that, you know, no one involved, you know, really thought that hard about. Because the whole premise of the game is, again, these pigs come in and, you know, steal the eggs and, you know, you have to get them back. So they probably just were like, okay, well, let's just do that because that's the story of the games without thinking too much about, like, yeah, maybe we should dial it back a bit and think about what we're writing in it. Um, like, I don't think they necessarily do it all that bad. Like, when you see the red character pretty much questioning this stuff and basically saying, like, hey, you know, you know, you guys should be questioning, you know, what's going on a lot more. Like, yeah, that's perfectly fine, and it's understandable. Like, yeah, if you're seeing weird things going on maybe you should question it before just openly trusting it so in that way it isn't a bad message like hey you know don't just rush in and you know look at everything from a positive angle like if you're seeing something that is a bit off people say telling you like hey we only brought in this but then they contradict themselves repeatedly they might be taking advantage of you but again you know a lot of it does come off as like hey look you know they're different from us therefore they're you know, wrong. Um, and I don't know how you could have actually fixed that beyond adding in things that might not have worked for the, for this movie, adding in different races just to, you know, 
it for firmly established like hey look it's not just a thing that we're against because they're different um species than us but again you know if you have an island filled with like birds and then you know add in dogs and cats it's just gonna make the whole thing weird and it wouldn't be accurate to the game so again i don't know how you could necessarily avoid it but at the same time for what it's worth as bad as it gets it, it never feels like it was intended to be bad and some of it is still fine like i said questioning it perfectly understandable so it is a poorly delivered message but at the very least i don't think it was necessarily made with ill intent so I, i'm not gonna ding them for that I will say, you know, just in the future, they, these guys probably should have reconsidered what they were writing. Um, and to be fair, once we get to the sequel, um, which I'll talk about in another time, and just to be clear, Angry Birds 2, way better than the first one. I, I think that whole thing just pretty much, you know, is lost. So, you know, for, for what it's worth, it ain't bad. Um, it It's just not very well thought out and it has the potential to be offensive and if you find it offensive i perfectly understand i i just don't uh want to be too harsh on the people making this just because i i i fully get that it wasn't really the intent like they weren't necessarily telling you hey racism is good um it just unfortunately you know kind of stumbled into that territory which again perfectly fine if you don't like it for that reason i'm just willing to overlook it you know just because of what it does right and you know it's clear that the intent wasn't there even if it accidentally wandered into that territory but yeah you know you know beyond that the animation is really nice on this like i like the you know the look of the characters the way you know they animated the feathers on them and their movement it's very it's very cartoony. It's like the characters are very loose. You, you know, you can feel their weight to them, but they're not restrained by their weight. Um, they're, you know, able to bounce around and it's, you know, it's all nice. You know, watching it again, I was definitely like, oh man, there's so much bounce to how fat these pigs are. Um, but for what it's worth, it's, you know, neat to look at and it's charming. And for a movie that's almost a decade old, it still holds up really well. It's still looks very nice it definitely looks like the kind of movie that how paved the way for like the more stylistic uh type of features that we're getting now like like you know your spider verses and whatnot just because while it's not as stylized as your you know spider verse or you know even at that time like the peanuts movie like it doesn't look entirely 2d you do get that that feel out of it especially with the character reactions i think it it's more noticeable on the pigs than it is on the birds so just cute well animated movie and you know, I remember walking out of this one thinking, like, you know what? For what it's worth, especially considering, you know, how many video game movies have been done, this is one of the better ones. I mean, now we're getting more consistent in the quality of video game movies. I'm grateful for that. Um, but even putting it in the standards of back then, it was just, like, you know, much nicer. It's very accurate to the games. It knows what it wanted to be. It's perfectly fine and fun. Could have been better, but... For what it's worth, they eventually made a sequel where we do see the full potential of this, or at least more of the potential. Before we go, I, I do have to acknowledge one of the best jokes in the movie is surprisingly a nasty, nasty gag. But it, you know, it, it just goes to show you how good, um, how how good writing can save a fairly disgusting joke. Um, there's a whole thing where when they get to the mighty eagle, um. Both Chuck and Bomb are pretty much swimming around this pool of water. They think it's like, oh, this is like some wisdom kind of water. They're drinking it. They're playing around with it and whatnot. It's this whole setup. And, you know, it does get kind of annoying, but it goes back to being really funny. Once it pays off where you see the Mighty Eagle shows up and it, it's pretty much revealed to be a pull of his piss. And, yeah, you know, it is, it is an incredibly nasty joke, but... Just seeing the reactions of the characters as they're realize like, oh, we did all these things, made it so funny to me. Like you know, this was shown even in the trailers, so it's not like I'm really spoiling a gag. But it was one of those things where it's like, you know, all right, kudos to you guys, you made a piss joke funny. One of the funniest jokes in the movie, and I perfectly understand why it was in trailers. Um, so 
if you didn't enjoy that, you might not be the audience for the movie. But for me, I I prefer to find it found it funny, and I I think it's uh, well worth it. I I wanted to throw that in, and I couldn't really find where to place it in all of this. Um, so yeah, the Angry Birds movie, well animated movie. It's it's fun. It's silly. It's very much like a Looney Tunes cartoon, which does make it a little weak in part just because the story's not the most um well thought out but it is fine and you know of course as a result there's a lot of you know scenes where it's just gags upon gags and they could have toned it down it could have been shorter but for what it's worth if you're just looking to relax if you're watching something with your kids you're gonna be fine with this movie it is something that i can't really recommend to adults on their own like if you're trying to look for something more sophisticated or if you're not an animation fan you might want to skip this one it's not going to be the animated film that makes you understand the the beauty of animation but for what it's worth again it's a fun time if you're just looking for something to relax on it's well animated funny and just a simple movie to to relax on as far as video game movies go, one of the better ones. Um, of course, as we get better, you know, that won't be true, you know, in, in the years to come. But I'll still look at it as one of those early examples like, okay, this is one of the ones where they started getting it right. They started understanding what they were um, adapting. And for that, I'm still grateful for the movie. I, you know, thought it was cool back then. Um, I'm glad that it exists now. And it may not be on my favorites list. It might not be the kind of movie that I go out of my way to watch every now and then. It doesn't really matter. I had my fun. You'll have your fun. Give it a shot. Thank you for watching. This has been Octavian Macias, the host of I Can't Believe It's Not the Mouse. And I'll see you again next time. Gaze upon Mighty Eagle! Thank you for coming on today. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel where you'll see video versions of these podcasts. And if you just want to listen to them, there's always the option of just following the podcast on their various sites, whether it's Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. Whatever you choose, I hope you continue enjoying these. And if you want to support me even further than that, there's always the option of Patreon. And in any case, again, thank you for listening. And I hope you have a wonderful day.